This was a completely bare block, not a thing on it. 40 years later, we've got almost 100% what you'd call forest and woodland cover. Name's Alice Watt, and we live here at Lavers Hill, southwest Victoria. Very proud to say I'm a member of the International Dendrology Society, and that is the people who grow trees. And this is where I think is really cool. It's, it was an article published on the most exclusive societies in the world that you can't join. Well, our society was on that list. You can only be in it if you're invited to join. I make furniture for a living, and one of the, th the word timbers I worked with was you and pine. I actually opted to stop using it. It shouldn't be getting used for what I was doing. The hue and pine is a, a, a very beautiful wood and it's very slow growing. It only grows along riverbanks in very wet places in Tasmania and it takes hundreds and hundreds of years to get a tree big enough to mill for timber. I tried to track some down here to grow and eventually I found some. This little beauty could be growing for another one or two thousand years. This is one of the first trees I planted here. This is a matter of great patience. Well, I got the hue and pine growing and then I started tracking down other trees and it became obvious that uh, some of the trees I was interested in growing weren't being grown in Australia. So then became a new challenge, how to find the way to go and get them from overseas. Uh, to bring back for the garden. Plant hunting is the term they use of plant exploration. What you do is you do all your research, preparation, uh, write to lots of people over there, forestry departments, university is that, um, and then get over, go and track them down. Bring, you know, you're bringing seeds mainly uh, and cuttings back to Australia. Probably I introduced something around 200, 250 new plant species to Australia and to some gardens overseas. My favourite is a, is a conifer called Decridium guilleminii. It's very rare. There you are, that's my real favourite. So this, this is probably about 15 years old, this, this particular little specimen. Only grows in one little spot in New Caledonia beside a river, actually grows in the water of the river. But if you, if you see it growing in the wild, it just looks so ancient. You just can imagine a dinosaur walking down to drink at the river and splatting his big foot on top of it. And there it goes, getting even more rarer. Some of the trees I planted will take hundreds of years. Well, I certainly won't be around for it. So this one here, just to put things in perspective, is about uh, 20, 20 years old. It's probably about four metres high. When they get big, I think 80 metres. So when that's about, this is two and a half thousand years old, it could well be 80 metres high. If it ever is lost in the wild, there is some semblance of a stop left. Some of these trees uh, are recorded as being here. Someone needs to get them for scientific work. Yeah, I mean, it's not a planned career path. It's just something that, you know, it keeps grabbing your attention. People say you're mad to start a garden like this, but then after 40 years, you get used to doing it and living it. Um, I don't know how people manage not to build a garden. Thank <laughs> you.